foreign government uh-huh. or, or an entity, uh, let's, let's say, associated with a government like Hitachi, yes, you have to register as a foreign agent. You see my point here. Oh, yeah. Is Jay Cullen a foreign agent of the Japanese nuclear industry run by the Ministry of Economy and Industry? Is he an agent of Hitachi GE? Good question. Good yeah, question. And as we know, I told you earlier, Cigar Lake Mine is now producing uranium, which will be distributed by Tokyo Electric Power Company, uh-huh. which is a major shareholder in that in that mine. And that uranium will be shipped out from the port of Vancouver, where there was a major uranium accident in 2011 on shipments going to China. There was a leak of raw uranium in Vancouver Harbor. Ah. So the question is... is isn't it convenient that he's on Vancouver Island at the mouth of Vancouver Harbor, the channel there? Isn't yeah. it so convenient? This professor from Peterborough, the professor from Hitachi GE, who will is now saying there's no radiation threat to the West Coast, is at the doorway to Vancouver, just as Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, is about to ship uranium from Vancouver to all points. Uh, across Asia and the Middle East. Wow. Isn't it quite convenient uh, who this guy is? And I would like to know, I'll ask, and I would like uh, uh, the new Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, to launch an inquiry. Is Canada, is the Dominion of Canada, owned by the Japanese nuclear industry and the Ministry of Economy and Industry of Japan? Yes, this is what we need to know. Wow. Wow. And in the meantime... Treason. Treason. treason against oh, yeah. The oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The sailors of the Ronald Reagan. Treason. People who are dying there, you know, and who well, tried to help the Japanese people, you know, and now treason against Canada. That's so, what so, we have so, to investigate. So far, Mr. Trudeau has done nothing to indicate that he is even aware of the fact that his country is being covered in radioactivity. Yes, nothing at all. He's the new prime minister. Understandably, Harper, he was sort of like a howdy duty puppet, you know, for the U.S. government. Let's see if Justin Trudeau has any gut, has any uh, integrity, any belief in sovereignty of the people there and the welfare of the people there. And if he can do something to stop this insult. I mean, this is beyond injury. This is an insult to the people of North America, the people of Japan who are suffering and need relief. This is an insult to people all across the Pacific Basin who are being uh, radioactively affected. So uh, exactly. something must be done. But the first thing of all, I think Jay Cullen and Ken Buesler owe us an explanation of who they really are and who they really work for. Couldn't agree with you more. Stand by just a minute. Uh, Yoshi, we have to pause. We'll come right mm-hmm. back. Meanwhile, folks, remember... The Olympics coming up in just four years. And by four years, the amount of radiation in and around Tokyo will be much more hospitable in the reverse sense of the word to all the visitors. Be right back. Daiichi. We know it's we know it's slowly crumbling. We know it's leaning in the muck. And they built this steel wall to stop the underflow from the mountain behind it. And what happened to the steel wall? It began to crack and bend and lean over under the pressure of the water. Water is the heavyweight champion. It goes where it wants to go. And you put a steel wall in the way, it'll push it right out of the way. Go around it, under it, over it, it doesn't matter. So there's steel wall, another loser. Yeah, well, that steel wall is hardly a, is hardly a uh, you know, like the Great Wall of China, anything like that. That failed too, by the way. Uh, this is steel plate. It's called plating. That's a common word that you sure. 
Uh, they usually play it around nuclear dump sites. They drive these huge, like, sheets of steel into the ground. And uh, it's not a very effective me- method. It's just like a, a makeshift method to reduce the amount of radiation leakage. It doesn't stop it. And the water will get right through it. will pass right around it. So they're, they're being cheap. You know, there is a way to store the water is by tunneling. Japan has huge tunnels, okay? They can do the job. They're yeah. not going to spend the money. They're not going to... But because... And the other problem, they're not going to admit there's a real problem. That's the, that's the whole problem. If they're going to spend, let's say... Five hundred million dollars on tunneling into the Abakuma Plateau. It would be an emission situation out of control. It would be a loss of faith. It means they've been lying since three eleven. Okay, so that's it's really all about the political cost, the emissions of of admitting they failed. That's what's really. It's not so much the money. Okay, and they certainly aren't going to act in a responsible way to the world. I'm really concerned that maybe there is some intention behind the. Uh, radioactive uh, contamination of the North Pacific and of uh, the U.S. and Canada, uh-huh. which goes back to World War II. They're building a new MOX plant in the northern tip of Anshu. Uh, it'll be an all-MOX fuel plant. If that goes up, it'll be like a second nuclear bomb against North America. And we know the number two means something in the world of nuclear revenge. So I'm really concerned uh-huh. if these people aren't just a bunch of maniacs bent on destruction yeah. of the United States and Canada you know, seven years after the end of World War II. So it's a real question. And, and as you said, the Olympics, uh, the town of Kamakura, a pleasant old tourist town on the Mural Peninsula, south of Tokyo, near uh, south of Yogama, yeah. it's near the mouth of the Tokyo Bay. The radiation readings there, and this is Fukushima Diary reported on this one, uh-huh. uh, they reported six in one schoolyard, six times the uh, previous level of radiation. So radiation definitely building up from the rainfall crossing the trench, but also probably from the water coming out of Tokyo Bay. You know, circulates around, circulates on, dribbles out, high concentration. Uh, Tokyo Bay, I was down there uh, doing readings this last Sunday, um, it's still massively radioactive as ever. You know, the situation. And I did visit that aquarium where all the tuna died. Oh, yeah? So they replaced the tuna. Yeah, they replaced the tuna. Um, and, uh, uh, but, you know, I had to get down there take a look at it. And uh, looked at this radioactive island. It's called the Forest of the Sea, Umi no Mori, which will be used for uh, Olympic equestrian events and mountain biking. Uh, they're planting trees there, but that area also, you can't visit there yet, but uh, I got some scenes of the construction there. Highly radioactive. You don't see a lot of workers on site. Everything is being done by these gigantic cranes from a distance. Oh, they, they so they're, okay, they're, excuse me, they're already, they're already building the venues for the Olympics already? Well, this is yeah, an outdoor, it's an artificial hill uh, on this uh, radioactive. This is where most of the ra- uh, radioactive material that was burned as this one major incinerator. But oh, the other incinerator. very this, smart. It was built, there's a whole layer, like maybe 30 feet of radioactive ash. Then they covered it with uh, uh, dirt from the bay and dirt from other places. And then they're trying to cover it with trees. But I noticed there's no workers walking on the ground there. Oh, and you got I mean, pictures of that. Are you going to write this up? Can we put pictures up? Yeah, 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 absolutely. No problem. No problem. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but Tokyo, highly radioactive. This Olympics is doomed, you know. Uh, well, the, uh, you know, the, the Olympics of death. Still, yeah. Yeah, still radioactive. Still people, kids out there, all those wear, you know, because they're athletic, they're in shorts and T-shirts. You know, it, it's, these are radioactive places, you know, double the safety level. Uh, the beach, beach volleyball place remains three times the uh, uh, safety level, okay? So you have, you know, girls in bikinis out there. And this, these, are inside, these, these places are not beautiful places. You can see docks, you know, millions of containers, uh, industrial sites, uh, waste sites from these Olympic venues. These are all islands built from garbage and uh, nuclear waste, chemical waste. Wow. Terrible place, you know? It's wow. ugly, it's, it's, it's contaminated, and there's radiation massive. It's like a whole... Uh, and, and the river is also drained down there, the Edo Gallup, uh, massive amount of contamination coming uh, in the water and in the sediment. You know, they try to stop the sediment, but it's still coming through. The place is dead. Now it's leaching out of Tokyo Bay, and it's killing the children in Kamakura. I mean, it's in their schoolyard. Kamakura is on the peninsula. It's surrounded by water out of Tokyo Bay, and six times the level since, you know, uh, higher than the previous uh, years. 
we we know Tokyo Asby Brown from um, Safecast has come out and said that there was no now he's one of the big speakers apparently with Safecast which tests his Tokyo drinking water. Uh-huh. He said there was no radiation in drinking water, but he only talks about iodine 131 and sometimes cesium. And so here's a person that is easy to disprove because if you go back and look at the original headlines, Tokyo had was passing out drinking water, right, Yoshi, for the babies and that. And so the radiation doesn't turn the fairy dust overnight. That was the end of it right there. And But they've been dumping it in the bay. It comes around that uh, coastline anyway. And if you look at the dispersal waters along the coastline of Japan, they don't necessarily go straight out to the Kurosha current. A lot of the times it goes right up the coastline past Tokyo. And that's like the inshore models of the tidal zones, the tidal um, currents. And that the local winds, of course, with the rain and convection, evaporation and snow, is reliberating it throughout the mountains. So it's going to wash into the mountains, down the lakes, the rivers, the streams, down past Tokyo again, and everywhere else in Japan. And, but how can you have Olympics? How can anybody have Olympics in a place like that? How can they keep posturing that they're going to do it, and then nobody else will be able to get ready, and they might be forced to do it there? I can't see them doing it there, Yoshi, like you're saying. That is the most ludicrous yeah. thing imaginable. Go ahead. Yeah, people, I, there are several people I met in Tokyo, and they all said the same thing. The public opinion there, the Tokyo Olympics will be the last Olympics. Once the world wakes up to what happened to the athletes who came to Tokyo, drank the radioactive water, bathed in it, ate the radioactive food, and then, you know, basically the rains every day will be drenched in radioactivity, that there will never be an Olympics again. There will be no trust behind the International Olympic Committee. So this is getting to be a common viewpoint in Tokyo. Uh, the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, uh, they're calling it the last Olympic. It's going wow. to totally discredit the Olympic movement. You know, these are residents <laughs> of Tokyo. You know, the residents of Tokyo are very depressed about what's happened to their lives in that city, and they know there is contaminated. And Shinjuku, which is the Manhattan of Tokyo, the water company there, the, the municipal bureau there, has admitted there's radiation in the drinking water. This is like the Wall Street. Uh, Shinjuku is the Wall Street of Japan, and they know their water is radioactive. The only ward in the whole city, there's 23 ward or districts in the city, only one admits to the fact, and that's the most important district of all. That's where all the wealth in Tokyo is. They admit there's water, radiation in their water. That's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. The world has got to wake up. You know, they've got to get out of their Paris dreams and into Tokyo reality and start dealing. You know, we can no longer cover up for Tokyo Electric Power in Japan, in Wall Street, or in Canada. We've got to deal with these problems. Now, right. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, the fifth year is coming up. By then, really, there's not much. You know, I, I, we're, we're really seeing a total situation of loss. There's still things that can be done. But, you know, time's not going to wait for these people. They've got to wake up. And let's hope the next president of the United States, let's hope the, the man who succeeds uh, Barack Obama does recognize, come to admission, something is fatally, tragically wrong uh, at Fukushima. The GE has to be held responsible. Westinghouse must be held responsible yeah. for their crimes against humanity. But these are crimes against humanity. They're crimes against yeah. the planet. They, kill, they may have killed the planet off. Okay. We just don't know. We don't know how bad. There won't be any whales left in another year or two. They're gone. Well, Jeff, you're the one who's reported these massive spikes in radiation uh, hitting Phoenix, parts of Oregon. Yeah. And Bob Nichols, he told me there's a very likelihood that these are massive. Uh, this is massive fallout from the upper atmosphere. That the uh, radiation that's been released since uh-huh. uh, the atomic testing, now Fukushima, Chernobyl, uh-huh. has so affected the uh, upper atmosphere in North America or the northern hemisphere uh-huh. that basically the uh, ionosphere stratosphere can't hold. That basically that radiation, which is circulating around the planet, is breaking through. We're seeing intense northern, uh, you know, uh, bo- borealis, you know, northern light activity. Uh, we're seeing a weakening of uh, radio signals of the electromagnetic uh, uh, belts around around the northern hemisphere. So basically, you know, chicken. I've told you before, Chicken Little was right. The sky is falling, and it's falling radiation uh, in certain places in America. Well, Bob is a voice to be listened to. Uh, thank you, Dana. Go get some yeah. sleep. Thanks, uh, Jeff. Thanks for you and, uh, and everybody else. Thank you, Dana. Friends.
Yeah. Thank you. We wish you well against this uh, kangaroo court. We wish you well. <laughs> Bless you, Yoshi. Good night, everyone. Good night.